Hello everyone, artist Charles Wolf here, back again for another painting lesson. I'm gonna start out today with a mop brush and some cadmium yellow. For those of you, this painting may look very familiar. This is my painting Heat that I put up a couple weeks ago, and I'm showing you the same footage again because I decided to take this painting further, but I wanted to show the whole process as a unit and all together. So I'm reusing some footage, something I normally don't do, but I wanted to show you the whole piece as it evolved, and so I'm gonna re-show you quickly here at the beginning the initial painting with the first layer. The actual composition of this piece, Heat, is improvised. The overall aesthetic is quite blended, quick brushwork, and I'm really allowing the brushwork to be very visible and forward here. I'm not blending things together too much, really keeping everything very active and flowing. And I'm mixing together just two colors. I'm going back and forth between cadmium yellow and cadmium red. And for this whole beginning part, I'm just using those two colors. grabbing some more yellow and just filling in the space. Decided to try a new technique and to make another layer on top of this one. And that technique I'm going to be showing you as soon as I finish this first layer. But here is some of the red. Notice that I'm getting areas of pure pigmentation, pure red, areas of pure yellow, and then blending between them to create the orange. One of the rules of thumb for when you're creating an abstract that's really nice to follow, especially if you're doing something that's sort of loose like this, is to look at where the colors are interacting with the edges of the canvas. I'm constantly thinking about, okay, I have red at the top left, balancing that out with some red on the right, and then maybe some more on the bottom left, we'll see. Where's my areas of yellow? It's the top left, across the way on the top right, so I need some down on the bottom left to sort of balance the upper edges. And so trying to create some flow and keep things moving, but also to make sure that each of my areas of movement and different colors are reaching the edge somewhere. I like to have things be pushed off the canvas and to have it feel like it could reach out farther than even the edges of the canvas go. And that's a great way to do that. It's not hemmed in anywhere. I'm getting different colors happening and interacting with those borders. I'm also making sure that I'm not having just one color touching one of the edges. At the top I have yellow and I have red. Here on the left I have red and then yellow and orange. On the right I have yellow, orange, and red. Here's some more red in the center, kind of balance out the top left and then maybe connect over to the right. Here's some more yellow. It's all a game to sort of balance and play off these different shapes from one another. That big moppy brush is fantastic for creating these textured brush forward pieces. It's great because it's large, it puts in the paint quickly, and just by playing these two colors against one another, you can create a dynamic looking piece. Here's some more of the yellow, gonna form some more orange here in the center. This sort of reminds me of a flames or maybe a big explosion, that's kind of the idea. But I'm gonna take the piece in a whole new direction in just a few moments. If you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel. I have new painting lesson videos up for you each and every week, typically uploaded on Tuesday. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Just blending here with the brush, trying to smooth out my transitions.
and very visible brushwork. Some more of the orange mixture between the yellow and the red. Some more of the red here. I'm going to connect upwards into that larger section and then maybe cut over towards that triangle of red in the bottom center. It's a little isolated at the moment and we need it to connect more fluidly to the outside edges. Here's some more yellow as well. Much of what I'm painting here is going to be covered up, so I'm not worrying too much about exactly how the shapes are coming together. And when you're painting using the method I'm going to show you, with this layered effect, you can create each layer uniquely, and if it's not 100% the way you want it, don't worry, a lot of it's going to be covered up anyway by the next layer. So don't fuss with each layer too much. Like I said, in this piece, we're going to cover up the majority of the canvas and the majority of these colors. You may ask the question, why not just paint the colors where you need them to be and leave the rest white? And that's a good question. I could have done that if I had planned the whole thing out, but one of the things I love to do with art is to be exploratory and to let the piece sort of unfold. I did not intend to do multiple layers on this painting when I painted it. I just decided that I wanted something else, something more dynamic, and I used this piece, this finished piece, again. Part of the process for me is playing with the paint, exploring what can be done with it, and so I don't always think through the entire process, and I let my instincts sort of guide me at certain steps along the way. Here's some more of the cadmium red. Touch more of the cadmium yellow here, lifting upwards. Just breaking up these two shapes and balancing some more of the yellow on the left hand side and some more yellow on the bottom right to kind of balance the top left. Also leaving the whole area on the bottom right red would work just as well too. The one color could balance the other. I'm deciding to make the yellow more prominent by adding it here and blending up into the other sections. Now this shape here is a little bit too triangular. I'm going to break that up and make it more organic and less geometric. Some more of the yellow. There we go. Abstract painting is so much fun to do, and if you haven't tried it before, I strongly encourage you to do so. Here is some masking tape. I'm going to let the paint completely dry, and then I'm going to start to mask over some of the portions of this piece that I want to remain visible. Anywhere that I do not put tape are going to be areas of this piece that will be covered over. Anywhere that the tape is, however, will be visible. So it's sort of the reverse of how you normally have to approach painting, covering over the sections you want covered. Here I am taping over the sections I want to remain the same. Tape here starts to crinkle up a little bit, that's okay. Try to smooth out the rough spots as you go along. Pull it down with your finger. Decided to make these more parallel, these lines here. So why am I using tape? Well, one thing is that it's going to create some sharp, perfectly straight lines of paint 
leave this portion that I'm covering up underneath to show through the next layer that I put on top. It creates some very sharp edges and it's so sharp that it's straighter than I probably could make myself if I was trying to paint this in and paint a straight edge. Probably wouldn't be as straight as I want it to be. You can get some really great sharp geometric shapes going on really easily using this method. Gonna tape off the whole top right corner. I tried to pick these lines so that I was crossing over multiple sections, yellow and red and orange. Again, smoothing out the rough edges. And then over here, I'm going to put another diagonal cutting across the canvas. I'm trying to break up the squareness of this piece with some diagonal motion and make it much more geometric in a very satisfying way. It's a technique I've seen several other artists use, and I really like the result of it. It looks really nice and modern, and it's very easy to do. Masking tape is quite cheap, and if you're only using very basic paint, it'll still look great. Easy technique, really great result. Okay, some complementary colors. Green is really sort of the opposite of red. It's the complement of red, and I'm picking a very bluish green because I don't have any blue in this piece, and I'm using that aqua and mixing that aqua color with some of the Mars black to darken and deepen the shade. Nice deep green color here, and again, just painting over anywhere that I do not have the tape. Most of this piece will be painted over at this point. I decided to go with a diagonal feel to, again, push against the squareness of the canvas. More aqua, then more of the black. And I really want the brushwork to be very visible. Now let me give you a tip about how to apply this. I learned from painting this piece that if you really want the lines, the edges of that tape to be very sharp and straight, make sure that each of your brush strokes are starting on top of the tape and then moving onto the canvas, not from the canvas onto the tape. I made that mistake in this piece. I painted from the canvas onto the tape and in a few spots it curled under or one of the bristles got a little bit under the tape and made my lines not perfectly straight. Quick strokes, very visible, don't overblend. It's a little dark there. I'm gonna add some more of the aqua. Break this up. I really want this to be fast, fluid, and very vivid. Lots of motion, blending of these two colors. Some parts lighter, some parts darker, not all the same. Too uniform, it's kind of boring. If you happen to get some of the paint underneath the tape, you can fix it to a certain extent, and I'll show you how I decided to try to fix it in a few spots that that happened in a few moments once I finish painting this over. More of the aqua here. Can't tell you how satisfying it is to pull off that tape it's like Christmas opening a present. It's fantastic. Lots of black, then we'll move on to adding a lot more of the aqua for contrast. Great colors. And it looks really nice with the orange and the red underneath. I 
Like I mentioned before, if you haven't tried abstract painting before, give it a try. It's so much fun just to play with the colors and shapes. You don't have to worry about making it look like a tree or a river or get your lines perfectly straight or more delicate and more pressure and depth and all of that. You can throw it all out the window. Just focus on having fun, putting a paint on canvas. Paint something that's beautiful with colors that you like. So rewarding. Okay, fun part. Remove the tape. Pulling it off, and there is the painting underneath. And look how great that looks against the new color, and how sharp those edges are. Fantastic. Little mistake on the top right there. We'll fix that. And not too bad on that one. And we'll pull off the two pieces of tape over here as well, a little bit thicker, looks nice. I'm just going to clean up these edges with my palette knife, kind of scrape upwards, try to get rid of that excess. It's a little bit ragged, that's okay. Now I know for the future how to improve my technique and my approach when using this tape method. I love how sharp those lines are and how vivid and modern this piece looks. You can do this same approach with many different colors, purples, blues, pastels, pinks, white and red, black and white. A little bit more of the aqua and the black, just trying to straighten this edge a little bit. And we'll call it good. Here's the final piece. Thank you so much for watching. Be back soon with another painting lesson. <laughs>